Hi, Robert A. Bonavito, New Jersey forensic accountant here today. Today I'm going to go a little bit off topic. I'm going to talk about something that was taught to me by a, a hedge fund manager many, many years ago. And what this is, is a technique in order to predict and understand what's going on in the economy, but also time investments and understand at a much deeper level what's going to happen in the future. What's going to happen in two years? What's going to happen three years and five years in the economy? And this technique I call fear the yield curve. And the reason I use that name is because there's the yield curve reflects bond prices. And if you look at how bonds fluctuate, the prices of bonds fluctuate. They go up and down based on demand. Now, I'm going to just take a second here to explain this a little bit deeper, but it's like any other product. And the reason why the fluctuation in bond prices is so power, powerful is because you can tell a lot by what people are thinking by the actions of the bond. And for example, let me just go into a little bit detail of how a bond works. If, if people are trying to buy a bond, lots of people are buying a bond. It's just like other anything else, like houses or cars. If more people want it, the price goes up. But when the price of the bond goes up, that means that the interest rate goes down because people are paying more for the bond. So there's an inverse relationship. And if you think about it, it makes sense. More people buy it, the bond price goes up, interest rate goes down. Inverse relationship. And so what that's telling you is if everybody's buying a bond or two-year bond or a 10-year bond, well, what's going to happen? Those rates are going to go down. And that's going to tell you something's happened in the economy. And there is... There is a, uh, a terminology for this. It's called wisdom of the crowds. Why many people are smarter than a few and how collective wisdom shapes businesses, economies, and societies, and the nation. So what you're, you have millions and millions of people buying this bond. Minute by minute, you can just go look and see what that bond's selling for, and that will tell you how people are feeling. For example, let's say there's peop, people, and, and smart people buy bonds. It's not like stocks. Smart people buy bonds. Let's say that these people, millions of people, feel that the economy is going to have issues. What do they do? Well, they look at the 10-year bond, and they say, yeah, I'm going to start buying the bond. Well, the people selling the 10-year bond are going to say, hey, everybody wants to buy my 10-year bond all of a sudden. I'm going to raise the price. Interest rates go down. Now, at the same time, there's two-year bonds. What's happening with the two-year bond? Well, you know, maybe that's going down, too, a little bit. But more people want, if they think there's going to be a bad recession coming, they want the 10-year bond. They want, to lock their, they want to lock those interest rates in for 10 years, not two. But I would expect to see some activity in the 10-year bond, too. Now, I know I promised you I'm going to go through this in detail so you're going to have a really good understanding. And two websites that you may want to become familiar with, and I'm going to actually go on these websites and, and show you what I'm talking about, is the first one is the Federal Reserve, and there's a publication called, called H15. This is a great publication because it gives you interest rates. It tells you what uh, the prime rate is, the two-year bond yields, the 10-year uh, bond, all kinds of good stuff on here. If you're doing anything, buying a house or a car, you may want to become familiar with this H15. And then I'm going to go in and use this data to show you how we predicted recessions. Okay, and, and how you can predict the recession or, or if things are going to go better in the future, how you can predict that too. We're going to actually go and do this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is this is from the H15. Okay, and you can see here that it lists bonds right here, right? And you could see that it has a two year bond, and you're saying for April, this is a 2019. Uh, the bond is is yielding 2.4 percent. It's called uh, they call that basis points. And the 10 year is 2.56. Now you can see there's a difference between these two bonds, right? If you buy a 10 year, you're going to get a little bit more. You're going to get 2.56. Where if you buy a two year, you're going to get 2.40. And so the difference between these two bonds is what? It's 16 basis points, meaning that if you lock your money up for 10 years you're going to get 16 basis points. Now, that, that kind of is a little scary, right? Because people are buying this bond. Obviously, the price is going up and the yield's going down, right? And if this inverts, like let's say 
that this rate went down to 2.30, which means the 10-year bond is paying less than the two-year. Well, that's called inversion, and that's where that's one of the signals that something's wrong because you should never, you should never have a, a 10-year bond rate that's lower than a two-year. Because think of all the risk involved in holding money for 10 years. And if people are willing to do that, this wisdom of the crowd is saying, hey, wake up, something's going on. And this is an easy sign to see, is this publication. I'm actually online. You could see the right here. You can see that I'm on this H15, and this is what it looks like. This is the whole website. You can see there's some really interesting stuff on here. Inflation index bonds. Um, you know, if you're a prime loan rate, commercial paper. This is If you're buying a house or buying a car, it's something you really should be familiar with. Now, let's go over and see. We talked a little bit about, and again, this is as of today when I'm doing this, but you could see here that at this point, the two years, 2.31, 2.52. Okay, so that is now 21 basis points, which means the spread increased, mean people are feeling better, right? Before, I think it's, we said it was 16 basis points. But now let's take a look at how we can use this data by simply... Taking the two-year yields and the ten-year and subtracting them, and plotting them. Okay, let's look at where this was done. Here it is. So here is an analysis that we did. What it subtracts the ten-year maturities minus the two-year. Okay, and we're going to see what this is telling us. Like I said, when you do these. It should give you some information. I'm going to do the max, which is 43 years from 1976 to 2019. I'm going to analyze the changes in the bond yields. Okay? Remember, I'm just going to take the 10-year and subtract the 2-year from it. And let's see what happened over this period. Okay, you could see over here, like in 1977, obviously the 10-year was about 1% higher or more, 1.4% higher. And then look what's happening here. Okay, this is 1978. The yield inverted, right? This is telling you that the two-year yield is higher than the 10 by 0.69. Something's wrong, right? So hopefully in 1978, if you were around like I was, you knew something was wrong. And I knew something was wrong. So what happens? We have a recession here, okay, in 1980. Well, look what happens. The yield goes, the, the, it goes back up. Okay, 10-year yield's higher than the two. Then it dips down. And what happens? This is saying, what is this telling you? Right? The yield is inverting. Guess what happens? Another recession. We're going along. Everything's fine. Boom. 1989. Okay? The great real estate recession. Right here. Da -da, we're having a great time. Not so good. Yield inverts. What happens? A recession. Okay, back to uh, having a good time. Right, this is really a good time, 2003, right? Everything's going on, some real estate issues. This is called the Great Recession, one of the worst economic collapses in the history of the United States. And there's a handful of people that knew it was coming. And if you're smart, what are you doing here? The yield's inverting. Sell real estate, right? Start selling stocks. Buy bonds, okay? Bingo. And now here we are. This is what's going on right now. Look, and, and, and we just looked at some of the yields. You could see it's getting, it's, it's almost inverting. I was really nervous in, in March. <laughs> that thing almost inverted. And that's giving you a great sign there that there's a, uh, a recession. But it really, I really think it needs to go into a negative territory. So hopefully that does not invert. So, so this was a, a quick summary of, of something that I think you should be aware of. We use it for all kinds of stuff, okay? Because we do a lot of litigation, as everybody knows. We go to court all the time. We do projections for companies. What's going to happen to this company in the future? And what I do is that this is one of the things we look at. Because if I think we're heading towards a recession like we did back here, 
okay? I am not going to say the company's going to do great. But if things are humming along like they were over here, well, that's a good sign. And uh, we think that the company's not going to be adversely affected. And of course, you know, our clients, if they ask us what we think about the economy, I'm like, well, I think the yield's going to invert. They're like, they don't understand what I'm saying. So I'll send them to this video. So listen, guys, if you have any questions on this video, just, you know, leave a comment in my YouTube and, uh, you know, I'll get back to you. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for listening.